and will you faithfully discharge the duties of your office as mayor of the city of Asheville? So help you God. I will. And will you faithfully discharge the duties of your office as a council member of the city of Asheville? So help you God. I will. And will you faithfully discharge the duties of your office as a council member of the city of Asheville? Is that your solemn affirmation? It is. Your solemn affirmation. That's what you can say instead of, so help me God, if you're swearing to do something, but the fear of needing God's help if you blow it, so help me God, uh, doesn't apply to you. If you do not believe in God, you can give your solemn affirmation instead of saying, so help me God. Last week in Asheville, North Carolina, the fact that one new city councilor was sworn in with a solemn affirmation instead of a, so help me God, so enraged his critics that they are now threatening to try to remove him from from office because he's an atheist, which is remarkable enough that any American would call someone else unfit for public office purely on the basis of their faith or lack thereof. What's all the more remarkable about this case is that the critics of Asheville, North Carolina City Councilor Cecil Bothwell, those critics sort of have a point. Or at least they have a legal reference point. Article 6 of the North Carolina State Constitution includes a list of things that disqualify a person from public office in the state. Things like being convicted of treason, having committed a felony, being impeached from some other office. And then it says right there in Article 6, Section 8, the following person shall be disqualified for office. First, any person who shall deny the being of Almighty God. Yeah, it is actually in the North Carolina state constitution that you're not allowed to hold office if you don't believe in God. And it turns out there are six other states that have similar provisions in their constitutions, mandating that office holders have a belief in a supreme being. Maybe you live in one of these states. Arkansas, Maryland, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Mississippi, and the aforementioned North Carolina. All make it illegal to hold public office while being an atheist. Despite the fact that another Article 6 and another constitution, the U.S. Constitution, quite famously says that no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. There's also the very handy Supremacy Clause, which basically says that when there's a conflict between a state constitution and the U.S. Constitution, the U.S. Constitution wins. That's the whole united part in the United States. Still, though, back in Asheville, North Carolina, a local conservative newspaper editor and a local Southern Heritage activist say that the North Carolina atheist ban should be enough to force Cecil Bothwell from his seat on the city council. Mr. Bothwell, of course, has the U.S. Constitution and the whole American idea of religious liberty on his side. The question is how a state is allowed to be officially in writing on the other side. Joining us now is Katie Parker. She's legal director for the ACLU of North Carolina. She spoke with Mr. Bothwell uh, earlier today. Uh, Katie, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Uh, Hi, Rachel. Glad Um, to be here. First of all, did I get the the details of this right? The the atheist ban is in the state constitution, even though it's really obviously against the U.S. Constitution? That's that's correct, Rachel. It is. When, When you spoke with Mr. Bothwell earlier today, did you get any sense of whether the councilman was concerned about maybe really losing his seat because of what's in the state constitution? I didn't get a sense that Mr. Boswell is concerned um, for for several reasons. Um, the city attorney and the city attorney's office in Asheville, I mean, there are some smart people over there, and, and they know the law. I mean, they understand what you just described, Rachel, that the supremacy, supremacy clause um, reigns supreme here. And the United States Constitution, as, as you mentioned, Article 6 of the Constitution, provide that you can't have this type of religious test oath uh, for any public office in the United States. It's one of the things that makes our country great is that it's none, it's none of anyone's business whether you're religious or not in order to hold public office. The fact remains, though, that it is on the books in the state constitution. And when I went back and looked at some of the, just even the headline level case law on this, it seemed to me like the big worry was that even though what you just explained seems very clear to me in the supremacy clause and what it says in the U.S. Constitution sort of seems to settle this legally, I'm worried about the fact that it being in the state constitution that I'm worried that that might mean that Mr. Bothwell is going to be caught up in a legal battle over this for a long time and not be able to serve as a counselor. 
Well, it, it, it is a concern, Rachel, and it, it, you'd be amazed at how many things are still on the books in North Carolina and presumably around the country that are blatantly unconstitutional, including, as you mentioned, this actual North Carolina constitutional provision. Um, uh, it is a concern that, that it, it might be caught up in uh, litigation. Uh, we would think that the courts would, would see, as, as the Supreme Court has said, as many courts have said, that, that this is a pretty easy one, that um, you know, it's clear that it, this is unconstitutional under the First Amendment and Article VI of the United States Constitution. Um, so we would hope that the city wouldn't have to be um, tied up in a lot of litigation on this matter, but you're right. I mean, it's possible. Politically speaking, of course, beating up on atheists is, uh, is, is politically popular. Atheists are a group that uh, takes a lot of abuse um, politically. Do you think that this type of law, and the fact that it is still in the state constitution, poses any sort of risk to people um, of minority faiths, people of, of, of different faith traditions who do believe in God? It certainly does, Rachel, and that, that's one of the things that's really interesting in the, in the 1961 Supreme Court case on, on this matter. Uh, the Supreme Court really stressed that it's not just non-religious people who ought to be concerned with these sort of attacks. Religious people ought to be concerned as well because it's a very private matter, your religion, and, and having the government be able to compel you to take a religious oath is a violation of privacy, a private matter between, I mean, for people who are religious and non-religious. Katie Parker is the legal director for the ACLU of North Carolina, uh, bringing that whole separation of church and state thing into very sharp relief. Thanks very much for your help tonight. Thanks, Rachel.